Today, I'm going to walk you through a day in the life of me working as a marketing data analyst. This is a remote job and it is a subset of a data analyst job. Now, you may be thinking that I'm drowning in numbers in a spreadsheet all day, but that's actually not the case. There's a lot of client communication, client presentation preparation, analytics strategy and thinking going on. There's also juggling building a dashboard along with competing priorities, project management, and a lot more. So stay tuned and let's get started. So as hinted at, it is a work from home remote job, which I'm super thankful for. Uh, having worked in the office for many, many years before I got this job. So therefore, when I wake up, I can nearly just walk a few feet to my workstation uh, on my standing desk and get to work. And this is something that is just super convenient. I used to have to drive. I used to have to, have to dress up. And um, I just cut out that commute time and can, I can get straight to work. Uh, some people like to freshen up, eat breakfast and all this stuff. Um, I'm a fan of intermittent fasting, but really, I've never really liked eating breakfast and my mom didn't like that growing up, but now it's supposedly healthy. So I usually skip breakfast and, you know, once I'm prepped and ready for work, which doesn't take long after I wake up, then I get right into work. And as Alex Hormozzi says, I cut out the wasteful time and just get straight to the most import important tasks. Now, typically, I've already decided what those tasks are by planning it out from the day before. But if I haven't, then I'll start the day by prioritizing by my top three most import, important clients and tasks. Keep in mind, I work for an agency, which is different from working in-house. In-house means that you're working for just one company, whereas as an agency, you have multiple clients to juggle. So it's definitely a bit more stressful, maybe more than a bit. And um, it's a lot more competing priorities, people asking you for stuff, limited hours you have for every project. So it's really something that you have to prioritize. So once I have my priorities in order, usually by client and specific big client task, then I, I chunk my days up into you know blocks and I have that freedom to do so um, because it's really about you know getting the work done in a reasonable amount of time. Um, luckily, you know I have a good relationship with my team and manager where they're not you know scrutinizing my every move. They just want the work done. So I usually prefer to chunk it up into one hour blocks. Uh, 25 minutes isn't usually enough. That used to be the method that people would prefer because of the Pomodoro technique. But I found one hour blocks typically work better on average for me. Uh, it just depends. And so what am I actually doing during this time? Well, it can vary a lot based on the task, but I will give you some common tasks. And so n not a single day is the same and things are constantly fluctuating. However, uh, uh, some common things that will usually pop up are the required recurring internal meetings with my team, my client's internal team, or the client itself. So these are usually just like recurring things, not the most important things, but usually things that happen and are scheduled in my Google Calendar every day. So those are things you have to attend to align with the team, understand where everyone else is, understand where the client is, and sometimes present. And that leads us to the first big important for important task, which is sometimes I am presenting something that I have built or delivered. So one example is um, I've pulled in all this data and tracking that I've set up and built a dashboard that automatically updates based off the time range they select and uh, even displays custom metrics that they requested be set up. Uh, an example might be, you know, uh, tracking form submissions or uh, purchases or uh, people who apply for a job. These are things that usually don't come out of the box in these tools. And so um, I've done all the work to set that up. And now I have to prepare a presentation and uh, you know persuade the client that this was useful, investment of their time, and then um, plan for the success of the project by um, making sure you deliver it properly. So um, that's really important because at the end of the day, um, your project is 
uh, yours. And most people make the false assumption that like, oh, I can have poor communication skills. My work will speak for itself. No, it doesn't, especially if you're really technical because leadership is not at that level of technical ability. So they're not even going to understand what you're doing if you don't explain it well. So storytelling um, is a huge part of that, but also speaking in digestible, concise ways without stuttering, without speaking too softly, without speaking in too much complicated language, um, without you know diving right into the numbers that overwhelms them. These are all things that I've had to pick up over the years and I've gotten feedback about, hey, things that I, I could have done better. So another big part of the day is working on tasks that, as hinted at, uh, require setting up those analytics tools and then connecting them together and bringing them into a dashboard. So this is stuff that typically doesn't involve me having to be in meetings with other people. I can work on on my own. Um, and it's something that I think anyone can can learn with the right time and effort and mindset. And uh, essentially, it's a lot of technical stuff around setting up a site with proper tracking. One of the big tools I use is Google Tag Manager. And one of the things you need to do in that tool is essentially build tracking and set up things that the -the out-of-the-box tools like Google Analytics can't naturally track. And there's plenty of key interactions, as I mentioned, a donation, a form submission, a checkout page, um, adding to cart, uh, job applications that aren't being tracked. And then you have to set them up and then pass them through. And then there's multiple data sources usually at play. It's not just Google Analytics. Sometimes it's Google Ads, Facebook Ads, LinkedIn Ads. And you have to bring these all in. Sometimes they're third-party data sources that you've never heard of. Or they use third-party analytics tools, um, SEO tools that you've never heard of. You have to figure out a way to bring them all in. Sometimes there's a connector. Sometimes it requires uh, more steps, uh, um, other tools, or even some programming to bring those in and connect them with the API. So I'm often not always working alone. If it's complex enough, I'll communicate with my teams um, at the agency. There's some really smart developers who I work together to find a solution that would uh, make the client happy. So um, a large portion of that is uh, working and and connecting those, but also communicating and answering questions with the client via email, via Zoom meetings, via Slack messages, and really understanding what they want, as well as answering any questions that pop up in their head about the progress, about certain questions about business goals they have, um, and getting answers for them. Sometimes they're just like, hey, I want to see if we've increased engagement or traffic for this key page or key feature we've added on the site. I don't know how to do that. Can you pull that up for me? Um, So there are one-off ad hoc requests as well. So Okay, what about the lifestyle? Because you're probably also concerned about, okay, living this lifestyle and how that works. Well, I will say, I I didn't want to lead with this, but because, I mean, I I wanted it to be more about the technical skills, but it can be really fun too. Um, Depending on your company, uh, you may be able to travel while working. And um, I've been able to do some of that. Um, I've traveled all over the USA uh, lived and worked in probably over 20, 30 cities. I've lived near a beach, a canyon, uh, a forest, mountains. And it's been super invigorating and exciting doing these things where, you know, while I'm working, it's just like I'm in an office or, you know, a setting like this where it's like a Airbnb. So the actual place isn't changing much, but I know that right after work, um, or sometimes right before work, if I want to wake up early enough, I can go outside and then take a short drive and I'm by a beach or a boardwalk or something really exciting that's new, a museum. And that is super invigorating because before this job, I really just kind of lived in my hometown and worked there for my whole life. So it was super exciting to be able to travel and do all that stuff. It really fueled me with a lot of energy for work and arguably made my work better. Some people say, oh, remote work makes you worse, but 
frankly, at least for me, it depends a lot on your role. But for me, I was able to do a lot of these cool things after work. Now, during work, I personally prefer to stay focused and attentive. So I prefer like just a straight office type of setting where I have my stand up desk um, or have a desk. Um, I, I would like carry uh, my, my stand up desk as I as I drove around and traveled the USA. Um, but during work, it's just, you know, blinders on focus on work, standard normal room. But after work, that's when I can play and enjoy and so forth. So, no, I did not work on a beach usually. Um, that's usually also pretty expensive. You have to have, like find Wi-Fi and stuff near a beach, which usually costs more money. But I will say, you know, there's plenty of times where before or after work, um, I went to a sand dune or a beach or, you know, went for a hike in a canyon. And it was absolutely incredible. I've seen some amazing national parks in Utah, in Florida, in and uh, a lot of other incredible places have such beauty. So that's that. And um, I would say during work, um, you just got to be um, careful with what you choose to do. Um, on rare occasion, um, I will go to a coffee shop or um, a library or something to work. But like I said, I, I want to eliminate distractions that could uh, derail me while working. So I don't typically do that. But on occasion, I do miss the social aspect that I did get um, while working in office. And I did that for um, five years, six and a half if you include my time in the food and service industry. Um, and then if you include all my high school jobs, even more. But um, I didn't want to lose the social awareness and social intelligence of be working with real people in, in real situations. So... Uh, on occasion, more recently, um, I will, you know, spend a couple hours in the afternoon in uh, the evening working from a coffee shop or Panera Bread or something and try to strike up short conversations with people nearby to keep my social wits about me. And of course, I do stuff after work to make sure I don't lose touch with the social awareness. Um, but that being said, you know, um, yeah, it, you do have a certain level of freedom as long as you get the work done to be able to do stuff like that. So, you know, that's essentially how the day goes. I'm usually working on these tasks. The tasks can range quite a bit, especially at an agency where you just got a, a, a random amount of one-off tasks. Uh, once again, it can range from, hey, can you set up this dashboard to, hey, um, this site is new. Can you set up analytics for it? to, hey, like, help us help us define our digital business goals since we're new to the online world and we're established in brick and mortar. Tell us what's the best thing to measure when there's a sea of metrics and then start to build that in a dashboard. Or like, hey, we're trying to overhaul our entire data infrastructure from the cloud warehouse to the uh, analytics tool to the dashboard to the business intelligence data viz tool um what what's the best stuff on the marketplace and so um the job also requires a lot of learning because it's constantly changing there's new tools coming out new fields old tools or existing tools get displaced by new things coming into the market right now for example tableau looker studio and power bi are dominant players but that even that field is changing so that's a lot of the work I'm doing and I have to keep on it. I have to be efficient, effective. I can't waste too much time and uh, I have to be competent and successful at my work. But yeah, I think with the right attitude, the right work ethic and the right ability to learn, you should be able to uh, do the same thing. So if you're interested in something like this, check out my free email newsletter below. It'll give you a free guide on five signs that this is a job for you as a marketing data analyst. And if you like these videos, it's free. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching A Day in My Life.